wins the deeds. In association with What's Good Calgary, starring your host, Duddy Does It. Featuring Dr. Michael Massey. Good, good. Are you stressed out being in front of the studio audience? Yeah, it's a lot of it's a big performance. Please introduce yourself okay. to the guests. Okay. So I'm Dr. Michael Massey. Yeah. I'm a physician. I work in skin and cosmetics, and I have a clinic here in Calgary that's uh, Coco Laser and Skin that I opened last year. That was a really good intro. I thought so. I liked Thanks. it. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> Had a couple goes at it. So I don't know. I'm just going to start with I don't take care of my skin at all. Okay. I have one bar of soap. Um, it's like a healthy bar of soap. I believe it. It's natural. Mm. Um, but that's it. Top to bottom, that bar. I don't even pull it out that much. Yeah. <laughs> it's I've had it a long time, okay. honestly. Yeah, it's been lasting. I don't know how long a bar of soap is supposed to last. I actually don't know either. That's a good question. But it's Doctor Squatch. Okay. By the way. <laughs> okay. If they could sponsor us, that would be awesome because okay. they have good soap. But that's all I use. Okay. So I know nothing. So this is this is what we can talk about then today. We got plenty of things to go into. Plenty of things. Yeah. So what am I doing wrong? <laughs> um, I mean, it's broad. I, I think yeah. you know uh, with my skincare. With your in skincare, life, to... don't answer yeah. that. Yet. <laughs> okay, we won't go too yeah. deep into Off it. Off camera, we'll talk about that. Like I'm not even the biggest pusher of the most complicated skincare routines. Like we have shelves and shelves of stuff that all the people I work with can probably list better than me. But there are simple things that I think everyone should be doing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we live in Calgary. Yes, dry skin is often a problem. I mean, the first thing for yourself is to kind of find out what skin type you are. So there's like the four big ones, like dry, oily, combination, normal, and then finding out from there where you want to go. But most things just boil down to you get yourself a good cleanser that works with your skin type, a moisturizer that works with your skin type, and then the three things that most people should do for their skin that like, and I don't, those ones I'm not picky on. You can probably find good stuff at Shoppers Drug Mart. But the three things that I do suggest Sunscreen every day, um, a retinol at night, and a vitamin C in the morning. The vitamin C protects you, the retinol repairs you, and the sunscreen too. So, I don't even know what retinol is. Retinols are vitamin A derivatives, uh, and so they're kind of like, they're great for, I mean, we use them a lot in acne and things like that, but they're also just good for anti-aging and just turning the healthy cells over in the skin. So mm -hmm. keeping the skin looking brighter, fresher, it works with wrinkles too. Um, I don't do anything. Yeah. So, no. so is it, you mostly... Um, see women, right? Like 80, 90%. Yeah. But you recommend it to everyone. It's getting more into the space with men. Yeah. For sure. Like it's, it's not, I don't I, even wear sunscreen. <laughs> I, I don't like putting things on myself. I, I hate it actually. I get it. Like I'm yeah. not, I'm not a lover of sunscreen either. I had to come over to it like a, but like long term, mm -hmm. it, it will pay off. I mean, skin cancer and stuff aside, even just if you're being vain about it, like skin itself takes a lot of damage from uv radiation so if you're protecting yourself with sunscreen every day like 50 year old you will thank 30 year old you a lot for it but i know it's not easy it's not yeah. my favorite thing i ever. also used to f tan fake tan a lot like fake tan like, like spray tan like, or in a bed uh, in a bed yeah like the spray tans i don't actually mind the bed is a lot of uv radiation that's not ideal for aging and skin cancer risks yeah i was going like five times a week for a while <laughs> i was dark like people say tanorexic <laughs> I've never heard that one. I'm oh, like, really? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I guess yeah. the people I know. Yeah, the people, yeah. It's, I don't go to the same places. Yeah. I'm not tanning as much, I guess. Um, but. It was bad, though, yeah. and probably did some damage. Actually, I have a dark spot on my face that is permanent. Yeah, I mean, I could take a look later, but like, yeah. there, like sun damage and tanning bed damage can be, you know, there's things we can do with lasers to get rid of them. Um, but even just cosmetically, yeah, there's like lentigos and things that can form that are dark spots that'll stay. And then there are like skin cancer risks for sure with it, so... What about chemicals in a spray tan? Doesn't your skin absorb that? Yeah. I mean, so if you have to balance the lesser of evils, I mean, the studies right now, uh, ideally nothing, right? Like in, in a perfect world, I think, yeah, you're better to avoid it all. But Is it like a Coke and Diet Coke situation? <laughs> I think like, it, that's a good, I like the comparison, like, yeah. right? Like, um, yeah, I, I think in a perfect world, you don't do either. But I understand that if someone can spray tan instead of doing tanning beds, I think it's a better change. Yeah. And I also don't use lotion, and I don't even know the purpose of that. Not everyone has to. I, that's one of the things I get into with, like, patients a lot. It's, like, everyone seems to think they have to have, like, super hydrated skin. Like, yeah, you want to have healthy, not overly dry skin. 
But a lot of patients, if you're not having struggles with it, you don't need to be over lotioning. You might cause other problems. Like a lot of my acne patients, I talk out of their moisturizers because it's actually making their acne worse. So yeah. if you don't find you're having dry, red, flaky skin, I'm not saying it wouldn't be the worst thing to do a little bit of moisturizing in our climate. But like, yeah, that's probably the lowest priority on yeah. the list for someone if it's not bugging them. Do you still get vitamin D, enough vitamin D if you have sunscreen on? Vitamin D. Um, yeah, actually, so they did studies on this. Um, it, sunscreen doesn't block out every bit of UV radiation. The amount of vitamin D, that you, the amount of sunshine that you need to get vitamin D is pretty limited. Um, so you actually still, the, they did like large studies that actually showed they, they find them safe. They didn't do it on super high SPF sunscreens yet. Um, but if you're just using the basic stuff, most of the time it's fine. Plus, it's Canada, and everyone should be taking vitamin D supplements anyway. Um, I do take those. Yeah, like literally yeah. everybody should. Like we, when I started, I was doing regular practice, and the government was spending like millions and millions of dollars on vitamin D tests, and then they finally just said stop testing people and tell them to take vitamin D because we all actually kind of need it. I heard it was good uh, during COVID to fight it, and that's when I started taking it, and. Uh... I haven't been sick since there was a pandemic and I never got sick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. So I think it, it is helpful. I always tell everyone to get vitamin D supplements. It for sure has like immune benefits too and things yeah. like that for sure. Yeah. No, like everyone should take vitamin D. How much is too much? Like that's where it gets a little bit funny. Like I've not, it's not my real area of practice. So the numbers might be not perfect. I remember like the old, like recommended daily allowance was somewhere between a thousand and 2000 units a day. Um, but they also used to give you like a 10,000 unit one you could take once a week, which would also fit it. There's a lot of people out there doing like 5,000, 10,000 a day, and I don't think there's any benefit to it, but I'm not truly sure there's any harm either. But one to 2,000 a day was what I remember being the recommended. I take around that, I guess. Yeah. Um, so in your day to day, what kind of, what three things, let's say, do you see the most often? Um, yeah. So, okay. So acne for sure is the most common thing that I'll oh, see. Oh, also do you. You do um, medical and cosmetics. cosmetics? Yeah, so we do like, I have a you medical personally? skin practice. Yeah, I'll do both. And then also lasers and Botox and filler. But the, yeah, the most common thing for sure is acne. Like if we're talking medical conditions that I'll see. Uh, let's say three of each. Three, three of each. each. Yeah, okay. Um, eczema, like dry skin conditions, it's Calgary. Mm -hmm. um, so whether it be like eczema or seborrheic dermatitis or things like that, we see a lot. Uh, and then I guess after that, it gets a little bit closer to what's next. We see a lot of hair loss issues, which still kind of falls under the skin um, part of medicine. So we'll see that as like a big one. But I would say for sure it's acne and eczema are our biggest two. Uh, and then cosmetically, like Botox is the thing we'll do the most of for sure. Uh, I'll do, we do filler often enough. And then more and more lately, there's something called radio frequency microneedling that's taking over the cosmetic world. Like it's getting a bigger and bigger part of what we do. So those What's are that? I saw you, you guys have a, a good machine for that. Love ours. Yeah. It's the Potenza. The one that made it famous was one called the Morpheus eight. Uh, and the Morpheus eight was great for certain things, but it's not my favorite for the face. Like the Kardashians made that one famous. It's a really cool name. It's a really good name. Yeah. yeah. And it was eight cause it went eight millimeters deep. Um, you don't need to go eight millimeters deep on most I places. I actually still don't know what it is. What is it? <laughs> what the Morpheus is? The machine. Yeah. So yeah. it's radio frequency microneedling. Um, so what it does is basically the one we have, the Potenza has like between 25 and 49, depending which wand you use little tiny needles that enter into the skin to the depths that we want. And they release energy in a direction that we want that the body responds to that kind of injury um, and energy by generating collagen uh, and col among other things. But collagen is the big thing. Collagen is what keeps your skin looking young. Like we I actually take a collagen supplement. I don't know if I should be. Someone told me the body makes enough. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not super sold on it from what I've read in general collagen supplements that you're actually taking orally. They're not really they're getting digested and they're not going directly. It's not, again, not harmful, but I think there's probably better ways to try to generate collagen than by taking it. Orally. So the needles kind of make small injuries in your body, yep. heals it in a in a way that actually makes yeah. it healthier in a sense, right? Healthier and younger looking. Just same concept of when you're lifting weights, you're injuring your muscle and it's yeah. healing by making it stronger. That's crazy. How did someone come up? With I that? don't know how they find out any it's of this kind stuff. Kind of in like the first place. Uh, acupuncture, I guess, in, in a way. I mean, it's like, it's like a lot of acupuncture. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, yeah. We do a, the amount of needles that we end up doing on a face is like thousands. Yeah. So have people been coming to you more for that because of the new machine you got? I mean, I think it's a big part of what makes our clinic successful. Like that machine is fantastic. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely the radio frequency microneedling is a bigger and bigger part of cosmetics. Like 10 years ago when I kind of 
was getting into this stuff anyone would just come in for Botox and filler and that was it and they didn't really think about the other things now this is becoming a big part of treatment plans so when they come in for that machine what are they coming in for uh, yeah, it depends on the person some people know what they want and they come in and asking for things like that but a lot of people come in and say i just i don't want to look my age or i don't like certain things about my face or i don't like certain things about how i'm aging and then depending on what their concerns are we might gear them towards that or other things on what can kind of target it better is there a medical purpose for that machine too I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess it's mostly cosmetic. It's not, it's not saving lives, but definitely there's benefits well, too. Well, because there's uh, medical reasons to get Botox. Tons, yeah, yeah. lots of them. Botox was medical before it was cosmetic, yeah. What are they? I mean, uh, you could probably list a ton. The ones I do, um, so we use it for migraines. Um, so Botox in particular patterns to the, the head and neck can actually help decrease migraines. We can use it for hyperhidrosis, so like sweating. Mm -hmm. So underarms, hands, feet. If Does it just put pressure in specific places to like you're pushing during a migraine or what does it we do? don't 100 percent know everything about migraines and how botox stops it but we do know one decreasing the tension in the muscles helps and two botox one of its secondary things is just decreasing the way the nerves transmit pain mm -hmm. uh, and so just overall bathing the areas in it helps and it's another one where it's like if you ask someone to prove exactly how it works they probably couldn't do it mm -hmm. um, but we know that those things added together help migraines um so when they go in for migraines, um, is it, can it be cosmetic and medical at the yeah, same time? Yeah, a lot of people try. Um, so it's, it's one of those things where it's yes and no. Um, the migraine protocol is not targeted cosmetically. Like it's often too heavy in certain areas. Um, it's fun when patients come in and tell you that they have like migraines in their crow's feet or things, but it doesn't, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> doesn't quite fly. Uh, it can help definitely in certain areas decrease certain wrinkles, but overall it's more targeted towards there's certain cosmetic outcomes that, that aren't perfect because it often makes the forehead too heavy. But so it shows when they do that? Oh, I mean, it'll show like they'll, they will develop less wrinkles, but they just might not love it the same way if, if they came in to just get it purely cosmetically. Like we would mm -hmm. use more targeted amounts just for the look. Yeah. But they're not going in for migraines and then they have like some lump on their on their face that everybody points out. From from the treatment? Yeah. I, I hope not. No, yeah. <laughs> not yet. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to avoid that. Um, yeah. How many men come in for that uh i think again like more women but i have i can think of a handful of male pa male patients that i treat for migraines too i mean migraines are not only they are still are more with women in general but there's definitely a good portion of men who get them too i get migraines i yeah. went to you actually you gave me a prescription i'm trying to remember yeah yeah it's well <laughs> it was a quick interaction but but we didn't do the botox treatment no well not yet the, <laughs> Honestly, the uh, medication doesn't really help. Nothing really helps. So then we should do the Botox treatment. Maybe. Yeah. It sounds expensive. Well, you have, you have insurance? I do. Yeah. yeah. The insurance usually oh. covers it if you meet certain criteria. Oh. Yeah. Will it oh, that's why I was asking. Will it cover removing my bags from under my eyes? No. Okay. <laughs> Sadly. Because I wear these glasses uh, to cover that. I can't see yeah. them because of the glasses. Otherwise, right. I would comment yeah. on them. But yeah. Um, <laughs> it's yeah. working. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and then what, what do you do for under eyes? Under eyes are tricky. Under eyes, like, uh, I don't want any needles. Uh, um, okay. I, I do like needles, but I mean, so first things first is good skincare. So trying to work on, uh, getting the skin in the best texture possible, things like growth factors and peptides can help that. So you know, like often when skin gets thin under the eye, we call it like crepey or, or like thin skin that doesn't help the bags. Like, protrude more so if you can get good growth factors strengthen the skin topically with creams that can help i'll do a cream can there you, you go. is it something that you can't reverse or bags under the eyes yeah. it depends like if it's just skin texture yeah it's reversible but there's also like there's fat pads in the area so there's like a subophthalmic fat pad a sub orbicularis oculi fat pad if they start to herniate out and that's what the bag is that's a surgeon I What's told it? Alex last night that all of those words that you just said sound like uh, spells from Harry Potter. <laughs> there's one there's one uh, condition of the scalp called acne necrotica miliaris that I cannot say without thinking of Harry Potter. Yeah. So like, yeah, some of them do. Yeah. <laughs> that really does sound <laughs> Acne like... necrotica miliaris is pretty good for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so is do you have more male medical patients still then? Like, yeah. I mean, in general, men just go to the doctor less than women overall. But I would say that's a lot closer. That's more 60-40 than 80-20. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've never thought about my skin before. No, not once. Not Well, not unless I get, like, something on my hands. Yeah. 
then I'm like, oh, I'm covered in skin. <laughs> <laughs> I got to clean. Got to remind yourself of that skin. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think it's changing. I think there's like there's lots of guys like you, and lots of like I, I was. Probably, I'm not I, the most manly. Either. I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was probably that way up until I really got into this industry too. Yeah. Like I never had a lot of skincare things, but I don't know. There's there's benefits to it that I don't know. We're all a bit vain. So, how long have you um, been a in the business side of things? So, like actually, uh, like owning the clinic. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been we we just had our one year anniversary like two weeks ago, although we had kind of opened three months before that, uh, and then we had kind of been building it about three months before that. So a year and a half now. Um, it kind of came a, as a surprise. I had a good reason to leave where I was working before, and then after leaving the next week, someone came to me with a proposition for what we're doing, and. And then we just started down this road. So it's been a, it's been a turn. Yeah. So how was that transition to it, the business side? It's totally different. Like yeah. it's, yeah, it's complete. I have doctors have zero business training. Mm -hmm. Like so much of my day now is things that I had not expected to be thinking and your, about, which your partners didn't have that training either. So or? one, so they both did. That's why I felt more comfortable oh. with them. Like one of them had run their own spa for several years. And one of them had kind of managed another doctor's three injectable clinics for okay. many years and then worked through a company that was buying them. So they had more experience in the areas that I don't, mm -hmm. I'm, I do the doctor things mostly. And then I contribute as I can from the business side. But like even that there still is just things that are always kind of now that it, as the doctor, I have to think about it from a business angle where I didn't before. Like do, I you, be, yeah. do you like it a lot? Like, are you uh, I'm, addicted to the business side of it now? Like I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't go back. I much prefer this. I don't know if I'm addicted. I don't know if I'm one of those like <laughs> entrepreneur expand? guys. We do want to expand. Yeah. yeah. We do want to expand. That is definitely in the plans. We hope to get to a couple of locations, maybe three uh, and see from there. Cause there's just, there's room for it and it's going so well that I think we can. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, hopefully now that we've kind of built a template for this one, it's not going to be as complicated to just pick that up and make another space with it. Would you get to a point where you're not, um, uh, working as a doctor anymore? I, I like, I enjoy it to an extent. I think I would cut down. Like, I think I definitely wouldn't be working six days a week or things like that. Yeah. Um, there's other things I kind of want to do too. And like, I, I like, uh, I like speaking. I like that kind of presenting and things like that. And I might, I don't know if it's showing well on the podcast or not. Mm -hmm. It look, is. I they're look, loving it. I, I can see in their faces. <laughs> yeah. They're, 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 yeah. yeah I can, <laughs> a few of them seem pretty thrilled. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that kind of stuff I often would like different, you know, some of the devices we use or things like that need doctors to go out and present them. So something like that might be interesting for the future for me, but I definitely always want to keep some level of a practice. I, yeah. I enjoy it. Um, so you are single ish. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Single. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not married. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's what I was trying to say. That, yeah. Basically. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what's it like dating as a doctor? Do I imagine, you're in a bar or something or wherever you meet someone yeah. and someone's kind of ignoring you. And then you mention to your friend something like I'm a doctor and then they turn around and they're like, Oh, you're a doctor. Hi. I like, I, I'd like to deny it, but it's true. And probably it helps a lot. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah. Michael, cause I used to at the bar say I'm a doctor and it worked. I once, uh, I still remember I was with a doctor friend of mine and he was trying to like talk to this pretty waitress and he was like, and she asked like, what do you guys do? And like, he stayed quiet and I was like, I'm a doctor. And, and he's like, I work at a medical clinic and I remember saying, why didn't you just say it? <laughs> like, <laughs> and then she just ignored him. Um, like, yeah. So it, it, I think there is a, a certain level of, I don't know. I think it just gives you a bit of a credibility that people are interested in when you hear that. So I, yeah, Do Michael Massey at 20 didn't get a lot of dates. Dr. Michael Massey, who wasn't very different of a person, I think did better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do you kind of navigate that is do you just poorly <laughs> <laughs> do you accept it or do you try to vet your candidates i think there's no way like to, to you can't hide it people are like well just don't put it on like your dating profile you can't hide yeah. it like it has to come out at some point and or you so, lean into it and your first picture <laughs> it just says doctor <laughs> i think when i was on a dating app my first picture was in scrubs oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah i'm pretty sure um you know there's I don't know. Everyone has to play their strengths. And I guess that in some ways is seen as a strength. So yeah. 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 Well, unless they're just in it to get your money, that's the problem or, or just to get like, they think they're going to get free treatments or things, especially yeah. they know I my, didn't even in, think in my, that. in my space, that's been a problem. <laughs> like oh, that's yeah. what people think. Like I've had some dates turn into consultations. Yeah. <laughs> that happens. Like they, they want it to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Do, does it ever get to the injection phase? So I'm not allowed. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's uh, that's unethical. So oh. no. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I can't do that. You can't inject like a romantic partner. Um, oh. It's some power dynamic thing. So oh, okay. the college would, would frown strongly upon that. I didn't know that. No. Yeah. Um, so what's the difference between being a GP and being a dermatologist? So I'm a GP derm. So I'm kind of, um, somewhere I'm a hybrid, I guess. Um, so GP, we do a two year like family medicine residency that has some skin things in it, but it's not focused on that. You can kind of target what you spend your two years doing. And then I did an extra year of training specifically in what they call practical dermatology. So the dermatologists do a five-year program where they're a lot more focused on the rare wild things that you don't see every day and skin cancers. Those aren't my thing. Like I can, I can scan for skin cancer. Well, I don't cut them out. I send them to the guys I know who know how to cut them out. Uh, and then for sure, if there's like a one in 2 million disease uh, on the skin, I can probably tell that it's not normal and get the biopsy and send them to the right person. But then for things like eczema, acne, psoriasis, vitiligo, hair loss, all those things, I, if you were to see the dermatologist, they would see you once and then send you to me. Mm. So it's kind of that, yeah, that, that interim, uh, they, they have 12 month waits and they're busy with skin cancers. It, have, do you ever watch uh, Grey's Anatomy? No. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just going to ask what character you would be I've in never, that placement. I've never seen. What, do you watch any uh, shows, doctor shows? I'd watched House. I liked House. I love House. I, I want to be like, I want to age to be to be like, like house, house. Yeah. yeah that was it was a fun show it made no medical sense uh like i love that the like handsome australian surgeon was like down in the lab running plates like yeah. he has no idea where the lab is like <laughs> there's no way but yeah um you wouldn't tell because you know i do a podcast but i, I don't like people at all <laughs> so i'd be just like that yeah yeah okay. I, I don't yeah. enjoy podcasting yeah this yeah. is you're just like a self-torture thing pretty much yeah. and sunscreen i was mentioning yeah. earlier nothing's really going your way right now yeah okay. <laughs> yeah but i actually heard you say the other day every two hours you're supposed to put on sunscreen. if you're out yeah ideally reapplying every two hours that's like, insane S yeah spf uh, the sun protection factor like it it's great and all, but if you're not reapplying, you can have SPF 200 on, and if you don't reapply in a couple hours, you're still getting exposed. I, you also said indoors, and I made a note to make fun of that. Yeah, I know. And like again, like it's does everyone do it? No, but I like, don't think anybody really yeah. does. Well, that. So, like so, like, I have a patient who puts on sunscreen before she goes to bed, but like. Um, it, I, through windows, UV, certain UV bands can still penetrate. There are still things that sunscreen's protecting you from indoors. I get it that it's not for everyone to do it if you're just staying inside on a but cloudy like cloudy days are not a reason not to for sure. It's deceiving. Yeah, that's deceiving for sure. You can still get sunburns yeah. on a cloudy day. Like that's that one. There's I some uh, illness that you're you're allowed a special UV um, coating on your car window. I don't know what it is, but I I was buying a, a windshield the other day, and I saw that there's I, an exemption. I have not had that brought up to me yet. Yeah. I don't know. I'd have to know which one. Um, what's the the most kind of unique thing you've ever dealt with? Oh, I mean, like it's. Is there any? I, I mean, there's like lots of interesting things we'll see. Like, I mean, I mean, there's like I can try to think of a few that are like even today we had like some like bullets like uh, so blisters coming on the skin of patients for different reasons so we'll see that more rarely that's like bullus pemphigoid or pemphigoid vulgaris uh kind of funnier um more odd ones that's the rarest i don't know you got me right now but something like or unique i don't know something you've only seen once before or something like that um yeah uh, i mean so t-cell lymphomas there's actually like a rash that can come around the body that's actually a lymphoma so i've seen that that was you know we've had a couple patients that come cancer? With that. yeah yeah it's a it's a so when people think of lymphoma they think of like the lymph nodes and that mm -hmm. but it's like a different form of of cancer that's not like the usual skin cancers just from sun damage or melanoma or things like that so those are rarer and wilder but like what does it look like like the I are, are you concerned so for yourself? Yeah. No, <laughs> I imagine so many of these things look the same do, to like, so that is, a regular person. Yeah, and that's one of the things with like it, it, it'll it'll make me laugh. So one of the, okay, so one of the rare, not super rare, but less common things that we saw not too long ago. One of my nurses is in. Uh, so Amy is in um, a bunch of Facebook groups always. I don't know. She just likes so. those. She was in like one of the cities near Calgary Facebook group listening to this woman talk about a rash on her face. And everyone was giving her advice for basically eczema for like weeks. And finally, Amy's like, can you just come into the clinic and see the doctor? And the first thing I walked in is like, that's lupus. So that's that's discoid lupus erythematoid, like immediately. Um, and so while, yeah, a lot of things look red on the skin, there is a little bit to what 
we do with pattern recognition where we can kind of see subtle things about it that make it different. On house? <laughs> Everything's lupus, Everything right, yeah. was lupus. Until it finally was that. So, it was like a Cuban refugee who actually did have lupus. I remember it was a woman. <laughs> <laughs> so he misdiagnosed it all the time. All the time. Threw lupus out there all so the you time. You can just eyeball it right well, she walks Well, skin in. lupus kind of made sense on that one. It just fit too well. So, yeah. But um, systemic lupus is different from skin lupus. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wouldn't know. I, cause everyone always Googles things in worst case scenario. Yeah, for sure. Like that. So do you see a lot of people come in and it's nothing? Is that like the worst wor of the people? The worried are? well is a big part of medicine. And that's the problem yeah. too. Cause then you start to get your guard down. Mm -hmm. And so often like you, you can't always just assume it's going to be nothing, but that does, that happens in all avenues of medicine. Like I, yeah, I was sent to shoppers drug mart for a strep throat test. And I guess they're sending for lots of things yeah. that are super common. Yeah. And it was negative. <laughs> <laughs> but like that. Like... And I almost threw up on the lady. I, I don't do those throat swabs very well. <laughs> but yeah, so I guess they're taking pressure off the. Right. With the real issues. But then, but then sometimes it's true. Like even, yeah, like you, you see those silly articles where like a headache could be a brain tumor. And you're right. Like 99 times out of 100, it's not. But it doesn't mean you shouldn't assess every headache because once in a while it is. Uh, yeah. So that's always kind of the problem with that is if you get too comfortable just assuming everyone's worried well, then you miss things. Yeah. yeah. Um, so how, it's weird that people go to you for migraines. I would never think to go. It's because of the Botox overlap, I think, yeah. is really I why. I would, I'd never even heard of that. that yeah. I would, I would not think to go to you for yeah. a migraine yeah it's it's i mean neurologists will do it too but they're harder to get into the botox like a lot of family doctors who manage migraines just don't know botox as well as what i do so it kind of just falls to a lot of places that do what i do that will do migraine treatments as well do you do uh, a lot of things with you said uh alopecia and do, do you do yeah. things in the scalp too yeah lots of lots of hair loss stuff um and then you know the scalp is skin too so there's skin conditions yeah. that can happen there as well um but yeah we do lots of hair loss things as well so like more causes to it than people realize sometimes yeah yeah um i wish i brought my notes i left them over there <laughs> uh it doesn't matter it doesn't matter cut this <laughs> <laughs> this seems like a keeper here i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Have a drink of that. I, I got to regather my thoughts here. Um, so how are you? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. It's a weekend. I'm excited. Did you have anything you were thinking about bringing up on the podcast when you were thinking about it? Were you like, oh, I can't wait to mention. Uh, I mean, don't I'm, know those I'm happy to talk about anything we do. I just, I don't like, I was trying to pick up on the vibe of what you wanted from me because I don't want to just like be like. The vibe. Talking too much about cosmetic yeah. stuff. If you don't feel like that's. I'll talk about it all. I, I like learning. Okay. Yeah. That's why I'm asking so many yeah. questions. Okay. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I really, really know nothing. Okay. Um, so teach me something. Okay. Yeah. Um, like, so pretend I mean, it's your, the speaking you're going to one day do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like, do you know anything about Botox itself? Like literally nothing. Yeah. Like, like so in my mind, a, um, I don't even know what material it is. Yeah. And like, you're not alone. My brother, my brother once, well, like he saw like a girl with like filler lips and he's like, she has too much Botox and you don't even know yeah. what Botox is. Um, so Botox is a neuromodulator. Basically what it does, it decreases transmission of the signals to make certain muscles move. It's the, the it's big thing that it does. It's not plastic surgery? No. So it's not plastic surgery. Yeah. It's just an injectable fluid. Didn't know that. Yeah. It comes in like a, a powder form that we reconstitute to a liquid and then we inject it into certain muscles. It's been used for decades uh, in like even much higher doses than what we use for cosmetics. They used to use it for like ce cerebral palsy in children when they had like muscle contractures because it would relax the muscles. Mm -hmm. They use it in like, you know, so we do it for hyperhydrosis for sweating. They use it when bladders are overactive. They'll inject it in bladders when certain like... How Salad. does it work for hyperhidrosis? So it's another avenue that it kind of decreases the activity and the signals to the sweat glands. So it's, it has all these kind of different ways that it affects like the, the nerve transmissions and the signals that are being sent. So it's another one where the sweat glands also respond to it by having less. I thought they normally just removed the, the glands from that area. In some cases, that was a thing that was done before, but this is way less invasive and way easier. Um, yeah. So it just. So how, how long? does it last so for depending what you're doing so for when we're doing it like cosmetically three to four months is the standard everyone's a little bit different it starts to wear off like it doesn't go three months and then stop 
Mm -hmm. Like it, it goes and tapers down. Um, some people are lucky it lasts longer. Some people like myself, I'm more of a two and a half month. Men often last a little less in the cosmetic Botox just because there's, there's more like stronger muscles to start with just mm -hmm. facially. Um, and they're, you know, maybe more physical activities and things that are trying to like work their way through it. Um, but yeah, so it lasts that long and so hyperhidrosis and what else? Hyperhidrosis, yeah, it'll last more like hopefully six months when you do that one. Um, yeah, so we use so migraines, hyperhidrosis. They'll do it for jaw clenching. So like when the masseter muscle, like it, it, for people who have like TMJ dysfunction or clenching, grinding their teeth, if you relax that, you'll still I be do able that to, too. <laughs> you have a lot of reasons for both. Uh, migraines, we got clenching. I actually one side of my mouth, all the teeth are flat. Yeah, but I've I, ground them down. I feel like this is something we've missed out on here for a little while. Is you just coming in and doing some Botox? Yeah. You could bring the podcast equipment and the whole <laughs> studio audience. Would it? Uh, yeah, do it live. <laughs> yeah, we'll bring the we'll bring them all. Wow, is there a needle in that? There is a needle. No, it's tiny. Know. I guess it would be an interesting video to watch me faint over and over again. <laughs> well, just you faint once, and I'll finish while you're out. Maybe. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Could I do the two things in one go? Yeah. Migraines yeah. and the jaw? A lot of people do, yeah. Uh, They're often interrelated. Like, yeah. Okay, I'll think about it. Okay. You sold me. Uh, You're maybe. a good businessman. I'll, I'll think about it. You <laughs> sold me. We'll see. I don't... <laughs> um, grinding teeth. Yep. Yeah. Um, how does it work for that? So, yeah, so the muscles, uh, masseter and temporalis are two muscles that do most of our clenching. Uh, and so often people, when they're asleep, they're clenching without knowing it. But if you relax the muscle and decrease the signals it has to clench you clench less you grind less hmm. um so it, it works quite well does it work for recovery from any injuries you know i mean definitely there's situations where like if you're because of an injury have like an overactive muscle that's compensating so like off label they'll, they'll they'll use it in things where if like if you have too tight of a trapezius muscle maybe from a back injury or things like that it's not really in my practice so much you know we'll paint around the corners on things like that mm -hmm. um, but definitely there's reasons that if yeah if the muscle if, if any muscle is overactive for any reason you can decrease it with botox like a, a back spasm? Yeah, like exactly. Like there's no, again, it's not on their formulary, but it doesn't mean in certain situations, like if you're having recurrent, you know, spasticity to a muscle in the back that it couldn't calm it down. Would you do it? Depends on the situation. There's some things, like I said, I'll, 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 I'll go into the gray area so long as everyone's on board and understanding that it's not indicated. Um, there's certain things I've done like that and certain that if people come in, I would say it's not for me. So sometimes mm -hmm. there's more specialized people for things like that. Um, so what else other than those, uh, head stuff? I mean, those are the big ones that all do. Like I was saying, like they'll, they'll use it in bladders. They'll use it, they're using it in stomachs. Now they're using it in sa salivary glands, all kinds of things. So there's, there's big uses for it out there. For me, it's mostly I'll do, yeah, facial, uh, migraines, hyperhidrosis, and then rarely some other little areas. So Botox is not the same as filler at all? Not the same as filler at all. Filler is hyaluronic acid. Um, so it is just replacing volume loss. So when people, when we age, when we get bags under our eyes, sometimes the reason is because there's volume loss in places making things sag. Mm -hmm. So we put filler in there to replace it. It stays there. It doesn't affect, I mean, and loosely it can affect the muscles in a different way but it's not like it's a neurotransmitter uh, neuromodulator like botox it's actually just replacing volume or changing volume so when we do what lips, yeah. is it what does it look like? is it a liquid yeah it's like a gel it, it'll look like a clear gel and what's botox then botox is it comes in a powder we reconstitute it into a liquid hmm. yeah so okay so they just the filler it's just you're pumping we're, a gel how long does that last? Depends on the filler. Depends on the place. How can it not last forever? I don't understand. <laughs> you wouldn't that. want it to last forever. Well, they did try these permanent. Is like, it is it coming out somehow? Because by uh, our body degrades it. We have hyaluronic acid in our body. Our body's always uh, kind of degrading and working through these things. So your body just degrades it back to normal. You, like, the permanent ones that people tried years ago were a terrible idea. Your face is changing. Your shape is changing. You don't like want something in there foreign that's staying for 20 years. Like, so prosthetic things, that's slightly different. Have you seen those human Barbie and Ken people? Yeah, yeah. Is that what's going on there? <laughs> I hope not. not I really. don't know what's happening. Yeah, no, there's like, that's body dysmorphic people, right? Like, they're, that's mental. But is that filler? Some of it's probably filler. Some of it's lots of surgery. Um, I bet you there's a whole combination of things to get them like that. It's terrifying. Yeah, no, and that is terrifying. Like that's one of the problems with it is people always think of that stuff and they don't realize that you walked by 10 women on the street today who probably have a little bit of filler and just are happy with looking a little bit nicer in certain areas that bug them. Yeah, well, sometimes when I see people 
I picture the Barbie and Ken yeah. people. Yeah. Like, even if it's not that much. But, really? Okay. Well, it depends. So I do guess. I look like I have too much? No. Okay. No. Because <laughs> I, got, I got some but, stuff. But, you know, the whole kind of housewives look. Yeah. No, when and they uh, take yeah. it overboard. Yeah, and there's the people ruin everything, right? There's always someone to ruin anything good yeah. out there. Um, but no, they, I, I agree with you. I, I don't like the housewives. Look, there's clinics in town to go to for that that love doing that. The stuff. housewives even are getting better. Though. Yeah, the yeah. old housewives. It's starting look. to kind of. It's starting to. The pendulum swinging back to dialing that stuff down, even with the. I don't watch the housewives, by the way, but <laughs> I do. See, you know, <laughs> I've only seen two episodes. Of one, yeah, I, it's on. It's on. Alex has it on. It's <laughs> yeah. on. I could, she knew all about the two episodes I saw. So yeah, yeah that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. yeah, it's on. So I do see it a lot, and I see their faces, and I, I say, just you're, don't do that. <laughs> but oh. you're saying it's not all like that. No, a lot lots, of the time, there's you lots of subtle stuff. Yeah, like what subtle stuff? I, I have vials in my jaw. Um, the, lots of people will do their under eyes and cheeks in ways that are subtle. Even women with lips like this, some lips uh, they don't all have to look like the lips that you see on TV. Mm -hmm. Sometimes just about a volume. Sometimes we even just put some in for hydration. People with really dry lips, hyaluronic acid pulls in a lot of water. So people with constantly dry lips, we just put some in, it barely changes the shape at all. Does it ever go wrong on you? When you're doing it? Anything can go wrong on anyone. I mean, the, the big concerns with... Not on your... I mean, when you're doing <laughs> it or, you know, have you seen it? Yeah, the big concerns with filler. I mean, like, the three things I always tell people can happen with filler that are not good is a bruise, which, whatever, that happens. It's fine. It's not common, but it happens. An infection, which I can't remember the last one I saw. And then the more serious one, which, yes, I've dealt with a couple times, is an occlusion. So filler, it's a foreign product. If it goes into a blood vessel and blocks blood supply or it goes outside of a blood vessel and compresses it so it blocks blood supply, it's kind of like a mini stroke to the skin. Um, you have time, like you have, it's not like immediately that skin is dead, but you see changes where it's going, losing blood supply and you have to do things to get it out of there, which which I've seen and which I've dealt with. And it's always turned out fine. Does it happen right at the injection or yeah. can, it can't happen later? It can be both. I've seen it both ways in situations. Like wow, I've had one where, yes, I immediately after I saw the occlusion. Uh, and then I had one that came to me because it was two days after it had happened and she'd been seeing another injector who was now out of town. Oh. Uh, and so, but everything had seemed fine the first couple of days and then the compression started to form from the outside so it can happen either way but normally it happens right away you see it an immediate same change spot. it happens at the same spot though if oh there's, later? there's uh, yeah well it depends like it's just wherever it's compressing the vessel yeah or sorry i'm worried of if, no, i'm not worried <laughs> i would be worried if it's something like a blood clot where it happens later like if you're injecting something into you yeah i don't know no i mean it's not going to go the concern is it's going into an artery um and then our artery it's going to go down to smaller and smaller so it's only going to block there it's not going to go to the brain or anything like that there have been like the biggest fear with it and which which is why i don't treat certain areas there have been a few cases where it went into an artery that went what they call retrograde backwards to the eye and affected the retina for vision for people so that oh. is a thing but it's like 50 times in the you know billion times filler has been done yeah. what areas the ones that i don't like to inject are up in the forehead with filler so if oh. you have a deep line here i'll just tell you to keep botoxing it there's two arteries superior trochlear superior orbital artery that theoretically if it just everything goes perfectly wrong can go backwards to the retina um everywhere else is much much more rare the more you talk the You're, more i realize no. i know nothing <laughs> I, <laughs> I think we know different things <laughs> okay fair but i didn't know there's an artery there there's a few, yeah. A few or yeah, any. Uh, I don't know there's any. There is so much anatomy; it's unbelievable. Uh, you'll see some of the surgeons that even I'll go learn from the, the stuff that they know about the, the anatomy is unbelievably complex. The face. You saw Doctor Will. I did. Yeah, yeah. That's I saw Doctor Will. Yeah. I almost stuck in. I wish I put on a little <laughs> doctor's coat and went yeah. for you and put your name tag on. Yeah, and, and he just, just wait. He just bought like for all of his clinics in the states. He just bought I think two hundred of the Potenza radio frequency microneedling that we were talking about earlier. Really. So he just spent like a ton of money on those because they're so he good. He also was on the traders last week. I did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Does he work still, do you think, or does he just tour? I think he just owns and tours and talks, yeah. yeah. I don't think he does much direct medicine anymore. Yeah. He um, is looking a little different, too. He has done a lot. Yeah, uh, you can you can see he's uh, he's taken advantage of his own tools a lot. I don't know, maybe a little bit far for some, I would say. Yeah. Do you 
do you do it to yourself? I'll do my own Botox. I won't do my own filler. Um, I think Botox is pretty straightforward in the mirror. I can do that. But really? Yeah. It's not that, that sounds bad. crazy. <laughs> I could barely shave. Can you tell? <laughs> Every time I try, I take a chunk out of my beard. So I don't want to do it. So you just let it go. I don't want to be clean shaven. No. So, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be able to do that. I'm impressed. I'm I, really impressed. You know, of, of my skill sets, it's not the one I brag about the most, I guess, but I can do it, yeah. <laughs> you could put that on I, your dating. Yeah, I put that on my yeah, first page, just me a doing video. my own Botox, yeah. They yeah. say when you're selling stuff on Marketplace to add a video, <laughs> you can do that <laughs> okay. on your dating so page. So I didn't put myself on Marketplace. Yeah, because yeah. then people know it's real. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I didn't know that. So what else can you teach me about? What about not filler and um and botox but some other medical stuff that you deal with pretty often okay um yeah i mean we had said earlier like eczema and acne are like two of the more common ones we'll deal with like acne is a... i have maybe eczema oh, or yeah. psoriasis okay are they the same nope they're different yeah so they they're seem the same to me. yeah i mean and they can sometimes it can be hard to tell apart like not always i mean but sometimes they can look a little bit similar they are different conditions um eczema like a atopic dermatitis we call it uh it's it comes from it's often there's genetic components but dry skin components to it too um dry itchy red skin whereas psoriasis typically has more plaques that have like a silvery flaky scale to them in specific areas of the body um most common like elbows knees scalps things like that i'm just taking my one shoe are off. we checking no <laughs> okay <I'm just> take... <laughs> this is a rash that i have oh, to look this at. is yeah. what happens on dates eh? <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah <laughs> i'm so ready for it. i'm like okay so let's check no yeah. uh no my my shoe was just too okay. tight. All right. So how do you get these things? You're born with them? Um, not usually born, but like you have predispositions. Like mm -hmm. um, psoriasis, they linked a lot to this uh, HLA-B27 gene. When people have that, they have higher chances of developing it. Um, the eczemas and atopic dermatitis, there's certain like filaggrin proteins that hold our cells together that when people have def defects in that, they have higher chances of developing it. And then over the course of your life, you know, sometimes something triggers that and you had that predisposition and then it starts. Um, so it's they're com it's more complex than just like it's there or it's not, but definitely people I think have. Mine started after a major surgery or something like some traumatic S thing. Stresses on the body for sure. Like that's you know illnesses or injuries can be things that can set a lot of the stuff off. Like stress is huge. The why we don't understand half of the ways that it sets things off, but. I did hear you say in your other podcast you do a lot of these. Hey? Sorry, yeah, no, um, two. <laughs> that stress just to lower your stress if you if you want to keep your skin that's i mean it's like possible. the it's the simplest statement in the world but it's true like it doesn't not, stress helps nothing in our bodies like uh, so yeah. decreasing that definitely can help with i would say skin's the window to the soul um do you ever what do you deal with things that are contagious yeah yeah i mean there's some like we today we had like a bolus in patigo and patigo is like a skin infection um that came into the clinic we cleaned up. Don't worry. We're good. Yeah. That sounds like a good, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a good name for yeah. a dog. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, dog. So do you have to wear, uh, most of them aren't like aerosolized where you need like precautions like that. It's more, you touch them to try not to touch them with gloves and things, but I'm imagining like game of throne. Have you seen game of Thrones? I have. Yeah. You know, when he gets that his skin's turning to stone. Oh, grayscale. Right. Think, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but wasn't didn't he have to get bit or something for that one? Or he was like, it's been a while. How he got that? And it yeah. was long, you know. Yeah, it's there was a lot to watch there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I liked the girl with Which, the dragon. Oh, yeah, Daenerys. I forget Daenerys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. called her Baenerys. Did you like her till the, at the end though? No. Yeah, no, I hate they really her. they really weren't. Yeah, very that's why I don't even think end. about that show yeah. anymore. I no, just, they really like, ruined. How could you do yeah, that? They to me? they hurt the best character so bad. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. Although the Hound was my favorite character, if I had to say, favorite. I love that. He guy. had a skin thing too. Maybe that's he did. He had burns, I think, wasn't yeah. it? Like he had well, like a yeah. <laughs> Maybe there's a trend of skin yeah. guys. Yeah. You're just thinking of it. Maybe like that's as why a I just I remember the skin guys. Yeah. How would you treat grayscale? <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to I'd have to go get some like ancient tomes and read them and figure it out. I'm not positive. <laughs> but nothing like that where it's like uh, scary contagious where you see it and you're like, oh man, I need to get out of the room or put a mask on. that would be like super unlikely to, to run into anything that far in like yeah. in my my world like yeah that's i mean there are contagious things but they're all pretty easily just don't directly touch them and mm -hmm. you'll be fine with most skin things we deal with i guess warts probably a lot of warts. yeah even that's not the most contagious thing like living living close quarters with someone else who has it and sharing things it'll have but I could touch a wart bare hand and I know I wouldn't get it. I don't, but you know, what is, why 
Why do they need to be removed? Just they don't. Because they're contagious? You don't have to. Uh, oh. So we treat warts. Most of the time, if you didn't treat a wart, it would go away on an average of five to eight years. Really? On its own. Your immune system Just would figure it out. It? They're a virus. So eventually your immune system figures it out and gets rid of the, the virus. Um, but people do it just because they're unsightly or they're yeah you know, uncomfortable or things they don't like do that. anything though other than look i mean so the virus can i mean in certain situations like the human papilloma viruses do predispose to certain types of cancers and things like that so like genital warts or um when women have like cervical hpvs and that mm. those can predispose so treating to those cancer. things has reasons there and so but as far as for like a plantar wart on the foot there's there's pretty much no real Mm -hmm. concern except just for comfort is it a different virus it, there's like hundreds of them all in the oh. same family yeah so it's same family of virus but a different strain hundreds of them but like a hand a wart on your hand and general warts like theoretically they're, they're probably different, different strains yeah. yeah they're probably different could they strains. be the same theoretically yeah but usually they're not they have hmm. predispositions where they like to go i don't understand why those exist <laughs> yeah it's a shame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I can make car payments, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then what if someone comes in with something that's a cancer? Um, yeah. So, I mean, we do see skin cancers again, like I said, I'm not a skin cancer specialist. Um, so I'll, I'll usually, I like to think I'm, you know, 95% of being able to pick them out of those skin cancer specialists. Uh, and so if I see it, I send it to the guy to cut them out. And then depending on what type of skin cancer, you know, there's certain things they can do for it. Like there's the very deadly melanoma. Uh, and then there's the ones that are not deadly, like squamous cell carcinomas and basal cell carcinomas that can be treated in ways that aren't necessarily like cutting them out. They're just more often like elderly people or, you know, 75 years of sun exposure, they get them on their faces. So sometimes they can like freeze them away or use different techniques to get rid of them then. But those are things that I'll see and I can pick them out, but I don't, I don't treat them myself. Never? Like if it's something small? Uh, I mean, it, it, there are precancerous things that I'll treat. Um, but honestly, like there's there's people who are specialized in that. That's why why wouldn't I send it to them to do I it? I did that at your place too. I'm trying to remember. I have a scar now actually. Oh, we, we took a we took on, a mole. Yeah. No, on my nose. It was sun damage. Of oh, we, did we spray it? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, a couple times. It was a while ago. You don't come by enough. I can't remember Long your chart. Yeah. Well, I've only been there those two times. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Except with my unless, dog. I was going to say, unless you're bringing Luna. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> but so you never, what about, um, it can be frozen off laser? Yeah. Uh, there's certain, yeah, there's certain types of like light and laser treatments that they'll do for them now too. Um, there's even like they'll light cure, treatments? cure it. So they're, they're doing different things for uh, like photodynamic therapy. So like uh, different, yeah, different wavelengths of light and things that can actually treat these in different ways. Um, and then there's even like just curataging, uh, so deeply scraping certain ones of them. Again, it all depends. Like if someone's 98 and the skin cancer is not going to kill them, putting them through a big excision is yeah. it's just not the right thing to do. So maybe doing a, a milder treatment that's going to probably stop it is better off. It all sounds horrible to me. <laughs> I don't, I don't like blood even. Yeah. You, you probably don't have that much blood, right? No, it's not, it's not a particularly bloody... I, one time I was watching A&E or something, I think it was My Strange Addiction. Okay. And the girl drank blood. And sure. I was uh, trying yeah. not to faint the whole time. I would, I would she pass, drank yeah. blood out of her boyfriend's arm, straight out of the arm. And then when he wasn't available to give her blood, mm -hmm. she had frozen pig blood in the freezer. The whole freezer was full. And <laughs> she made like Bloody Marys, but it was blood. Yeah. Sweet. So yeah, I, we don't we don't do any of that. I don't support it. I didn't it. think you yeah, did. I'm don't just support saying, it. That's wild. Would yeah. that bother you to watch that? I pr I'm probably just not. I wouldn't faint. You would but just I'd change. The probably channel. change the channel to Boy Meets World or something yeah. and just move on. Yeah. 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 Boy Meets World is good. <laughs> <laughs> Big fan. <laughs> um, what else? What else? What I mean, else are you do in a, a like week? Other, a I month? Mean, a month? Um, you know, like, like we'd said like acne is another thing that we often see. Um, so we'll, we'll treat I've everyone never, from never had to deal with much of that. No, I that's, had a zit like, like two or three years ago. <laughs> One zit. <laughs> it bothered me. I put toothpaste on it though. Classic. Dried it out. Dried it out. It gone. I didn't need to go to anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Some people struggle a little more. Yeah, no, I know. I've seen it. Um, th that's the most common thing. Most common thing for sure. And it's not only teenagers, like adults all the time. So it's yeah. different, right? Than just 
zits or i mean like it zits i mean there's different forms like there's com like blackheads whiteheads comedones and then there's bigger cysts and things like that so depending on the type of acne you have um but yeah we deal with it we deal with that every day 10 15 is the cause a day. oil so sebum sebaceous production yeah as we call it oil is basically the thing that's plugging is getting plugged and making the pimples but they usually say it breaks down to four things um so inflammation the c acne bacteria on our skin um high hyperkeratinization like plugging of the pores and then the our hormones developing the sebum so those four things are the ways we try to target and figure it out how do you treat the how do you treat that Ste all one is it different for each one of those it's different four? for each one although funny enough like the if you look at the flow charts that you're supposed to use no matter what people come in with acne the first thing you're supposed to do is a retinol for everyone um so we had talked about retinols before like vitamin a derivatives that's always step one but for some people it's topicals if they're milder some people will use antibiotics or for women like the birth control pill can help with it and then accutane is the big gun that we'll we'll use that i was um uh, foods that are high in vitamin A help? So like, I, another thing where I think it doesn't hurt, but I don't believe that you can get enough of it. Like when we, the retinols are these like special molecules that actually have more activity to them than just pure vitamin A. But again, I don't think it hurts to be, to be having vitamin A rich foods. Yeah. Yeah. When you say it doesn't hurt, do you think it helps? <laughs> Probably not. Oh, yeah. Okay. But yeah, like a lot of, a lot of my job is people have do want to approach things differently. I, like I have no problem with people going through, as long as they listen to what I want to do as well. Mm -hmm. Then if people want to try these other things, I don't. I don't know everything. Medicine doesn't know everything. We'll be wrong about thirty three percent of the stuff we think is right today in ten years. Yeah. So if you're trying something different that doesn't harm you, then go for it. Like I, I never knock that for people. I'm always worried about chemicals on my skin. Yeah. Even. The cologne and stuff. Mm. I don't like to put on my skin. I don't like cologne. Either. But obviously, these uh, things that you like, uh, the products you have, they don't have any. I mean, there's there's chemicals and everything. Like you know, like it's it's different than something you'll buy at Walmart, right? Yeah, and that's it. Like they're more they're more tested, more studied, uh, more monitored too. Like the the actual contents are put to stricter uh, supervision and that, but. I'm worried also, I don't even use chapstick. <laughs> and I think if I use it once, I'm going to need it for the rest of my life. And <laughs> I think that will happen with any kind of lotion or anything like that. Is that real? I, like, I think that you can develop dependencies on a lot of things that like, if you Would start my lips them... stop producing lip? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's the lips just stopping lips. Like, I, I don't love chapstick either. And you know, chapstick has stuff in it that I don't usually suggest, but like plain aquaphor, just hydrating things. Sometimes just building your skin barrier back up, letting it get to the point where it can hold in its own hydration is better. Mm -hmm. um, yes, there are, like, yeah, I mean, like what those nasal sprays that you, know, you clear your nasal passages and then a day later it's terrible unless you're doing it all the time, you get hooked there. I understand when people get, get a nervous. bit of a buzz from those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know yeah. a guy. Yeah. 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 He was my friend and I lost him to nasal spray. To nasal spray. Yeah. He didn't die. I just don't yeah, hang just out with him. Him He's busy spraying stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. Question. So, but, if you drink enough water, doesn't your skin naturally do it? It's part of it, um, but there's like outside factors too and skin barrier factors too. So definitely staying hydrated is a part of it, but I think sometimes you do need some help. That's why the, the billion dollar pharmaceutical industry in skincare, like it, because it works. Yeah. yeah, I've never heard of a skin barrier even. Yeah, I mean, it was just, it's kind of like a term that uh, I don't even... I, I know even, my skin is waterproof. I've tried a lot <laughs> of tried, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so there's just getting certain layers of the skin to hold in its moisture better. Um, you know, just having it at a certain healthy level is, uh, makes it that you need less of the moisturizers. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, like, even when we're treating patients who have really dry skin on their face, it has to get a little bit worse before it gets better sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what were we talking about just before that? Man, I mean, acne you, a bit. I don't yeah. know. Uh, acne, treating acne. Yeah. Inflammation. That's yeah. what I was going to talk about. Yeah. Um, I take turmeric. Inflammation is a problem for my joints yeah. and everything, yeah. really. Inflammation, I mean, it's it's a natural response, but it often makes things worse, right? Like, it's our, our body's kind of answer to things, but it doesn't necessarily It seems help. like stress and inflammation are the root of everything. I mean, it's a bold statement, but I think that they're <laughs> definitely, <laughs> I don't know. I think Did they're part. Did you learn that? I wouldn't say that that was like a day in med school that yeah. I can remember, but I think they're, they're not good in general. Yeah. yeah. Trying to cut those down in certain situations can be helpful. I, I don't know how inflammation 
causes acne, what else does it cause <clears throat> that you deal with? I mean, so I mean, inflammation is always kind of like a side, uh, a side part. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, of a lot of the skin conditions we have, so like, it doesn't make any of them. Forgive me, second, your fault. That's no problem. I'll take a drink too. This <clears throat> one's not as good as not. that plain water. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, it's a natural response to. <laughs> <laughs> really upset with that water. It's maybe because I had it for a long time. I don't know. You mean like unopened? It doesn't keep? (laughs) It doesn't keep, I think. (laughs) I don't know. I smuggled it in from the States, too. You're putting that on the podcast. They're not watching. Maybe. I don't know. You can never know. They're not my target audience. Yeah. Border border Patrol. Patrol. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I might get a call. One more second. I'll be back. Yeah. So something from Amazon is stuck at the border. I need to pay $400. Is that the call? How do you treat uh, choking? <laughs> um, Just so I know in case. Yeah, the, the Heimlich's probably continues. not going to help with this one. Yeah, I don't know the Heimlich. Yeah. Do they still do that? I yeah, thought they don't do that. That's a real thing. No, why, why would they stop the Heimlich? I don't know. Just let them, let them choke now. Yeah, <laughs> the, new, the new plan is just let I it go. I thought there was a new thing. Doesn't Maybe do you not do it to babies? It's different to babies what you do. Yeah, right. it's just, little, you don't you don't just grab them from behind and put a fist through their the sternum. But from what I remember, <laughs> you put them on the table and kind of hit them in the back. Is that wrong? You know, it's not specific. Like there are times when you actually do hit them in the back, but it's not. It used to be like that was the no no, but there actually are certain situations where they have to. Um, but it's uh, I don't know. It's been a while since I've done my CPR course that has all been, that. I, my baby has grown. I don't need to. Cho- save choking yeah, not babies to save. Yeah, you don't have to save like 13 and up now. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any baby chokes in your room, you're fine. You're walking out. I would leave. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't want to be responsible. I don't know what to I was going to put the baby on the table and hit it in the back. Yeah. So, well, let me, if it happens in here, let me. If Heimlich. one of the crowd goes down, yeah. Yeah. Do you know the Heimlich? <clears throat> okay. So mm-hmm. if you choke, we're actually good. Yeah, I think we're good. I just asked a random think, audience member. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. it's settling itself down audience. too. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's uh. <laughs> resolving. I think we're okay. Um, yeah, no, you're talking about inflammation. Like it just, it, especially with acne, it just makes things worse. And so d- taking down the inflammation, some of the treatments that we use are like anti-inflammatories. Antibiotics are actually anti-inflammatories too. That's one of the things we'll do for it. Uh, and so taking that down helps treat the acne. What, uh, what do you give for that? Uh, I mean, so like one thing, so there's an antibiotic called doxycycline that takes down the bacteria, uh, but also is an anti-inflammatory and it's like secondary mechanism. So that's one. There's something called uh, Axone or Dapsone that's an atopical anti-inflammatory that we'll use. So different things like that. So a lot of medications that have two purposes almost, like that? Yeah, like there's almost all of them. Like I remember I got a, I don't know if it was an ADD or anxiety medication. Those are very different though. They don't, <laughs> they don't overlap, yeah. <laughs> it was also used for quitting smoking. Oh, okay. It was Wellbutrin. Yeah, Wellbutrin, yeah. Um, so not so much ADD, so more anxiety. Anxiety? Yeah. yeah. So does that happen where they just have a drug and then they, want, they realize the side effects happening and then they just put a new name on it and resell it? There's financial benefit for it too, right? Like, yeah. So if they can get a new trademark on it for a different purpose. So yeah. the drug companies are always looking for that. If they find like a secondary use for it, they just put a new name and then they get like 17 years or whatever of being able to sell it again. So that's yeah. a, there's huge incentive to find that. Do you think it happens like that though where it's a reported side effect or does it happen in trials or something i mean probably both yeah they probably find tendencies in the trials and then hear reported side effects and find things from that but yeah that's that's actually a big problem sometimes it's their their incentives are a little bit skewed yeah yeah have you ever heard of something like a breakthrough medicine being discovered that way i mean lots of medicines have been discovered from like odd ways like i mean penicillin was a mold and things like yeah yeah. um so it's i'm sure there's I'm trying to think of one where the the side effect was better than the intended effect. I mean, I'm sure if I sat down, I could come up with yeah. a few where that was. How like, do you think they found that Wellbutrin one? They, like someone was anxious, and then they're like, oh, "I hate smoking." <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wonder. Yeah, it probably just like maybe people reported less craving cigarettes, and they started just to like, like look down that way. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> just, I feel less anxious, but I hate smoking. Um. <laughs> So, yeah. So what's your, uh, what's going to be your expansion plan? Like what is your, is it like a, a 10 year goal or? Hopefully sooner than that. Um, so, you know, with a, without setting too strict of a timeline, we're hoping within the next year to start looking at the next place. 
Um, and so, yeah, hopefully, hopefully three and five would have been a great goal for us to like three locations in five years. Wow. Um, yeah, which is, I mean, if you'd asked me that two years ago, I would, I, I was just the fun uncle at the <laughs> other clinic. Like I didn't do anything. I just bought the nurse's lunch and went home. Are um, you going to do expand to other cities or anything? I mean, I, I don't think that that would be in my plan. Uh, you have to get too cookie cutter. You have to get too like Walmart at that point when you're starting to like, spread that much. Like the place I came from was not a fit for me. And that's exactly what they were trying to do, right? They were trying to make some big box store of a dermatology place mm -hmm. uh, that had just protocols and practice and no real individuality to it. So I don't think that fits for me. I think I would try and stay here. And then I don't know if a bigger one wanted to buy them. Uh, maybe that would be something to be open to, but we'd see. Is it... Um how does it work with for your reputation being medical and cosmetic is it does it take away from the medical so that's or either i guess well yeah like it, it could go either way yeah i try to divide it like that's why we try to separate it because i can see situations where both could be like i think in general it's helpful overall i think a lot of times medical patients can kind of get exposed to cosmetic things and cosmetic patients can realize that they need medical things when they're coming to see us yeah. so i think it helps in both ways but yeah there's definitely if you don't separate them well enough uh, i could see a medical patient not being happy if they feel like maybe the cosmetic patients are getting treated in a different way um and that was always you know, that was a, a big concern when we were building our place to have them kind of slightly separated. Again, not that, you know, certain people belong in different rooms, but just I don't want medical patients thinking they're not getting treated. Do they not get the cucumber water or something? They can get the cucumber water if they want it. <laughs> Do you have cucumber water? <laughs> no, nah, we got oh. bubblies. Yeah, you oh. can get the bubblies. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. but <laughs> I know. You've only yeah. been twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to the medical side. Been, yeah, it's true. You haven't come um, to the side. What are most places separate? I mean, a lot of places don't do both, right? Like there are a lot of skin skin places that just do skin. There's a lot of cosmetic places that just do cosmetic. The ones that are like this, yeah, you try to put a little bit of a partition. Um, and I think we do a good job of both. So I don't think we're holding back on anyone on either side. But there is something just, it just makes it a little bit easier for everyone if it's not sitting in the same waiting room. Yeah, maybe feeling so like there might be people in there like, nervous that they're checking on a cancer and then someone in there yeah, like excited uh, someone for going for, exactly chin. right and they're going <laughs> for their new chin whatever like I why'd they know. get called in first like yeah. right like exactly so just i mean i think there is a little bit of yeah appearances to keep up there and i think you just we still provide the right service for everyone but yeah I, I could see how patients especially stressed out medical patients you're concerned about your health could i guess the cosmetic is still kind of medical i mean to an extent, like I, there's, I, I do stand by what I do is not just like plumping up lips. Like it, people get confidence, people feel better, people are happier. It, it, if you do things right, it helps their lives. And you need the training to inject something into someone's face. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. There's... I wouldn't be good at it. <laughs> I, yeah. Even with training. Yeah. I would faint. <laughs> You'd faint. Yeah. yeah. And get through one poke. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, there's that. Like there's definitely a massive medical. It's terrifying to think that there's lots of people out there doing injections that have no training. You can buy stuff online uh, and get it shipped in from God knows where. And there's people in basements injecting things with no idea what the yeah. anatomy do, is. Uh, do people go out of the country for a lot of stuff? Yeah, like, more and more. I know for hair, people are going to Turkey, Turkey all the time. Yeah. And then a lot of plastic surgeries like Mexico, Colombia, things like that now. And it's a little, uh, I know lots of people who've done it. I think it's one of those things where it's like when it goes great, perfect. But when there's a problem, like it, they probably don't have the same standards. Well, they, they, it, some of the clinics are fantastic. A lot of them are doctors from here who've just gone down there and set up shop in a Live different in situation. Life. Right. Yeah. Like, so it's, I'm not, they probably have similar training, similar standards, but just surgery has complications and like sometimes complications come two weeks later and so if you're in Colombia, you have surgery you fly a week home a week later and you have a complication you come to me who didn't do the surgery who doesn't have a chart who doesn't know anything about what's going on you're not getting the best care like i saw a dateline episode once where they were doing fake surgeries they had blood packets that they were i feel like i've seen this yeah. too yeah <laughs> like, so crazy i feel like and i've seen this it was like a placebo maybe because people were leaving fine they would pop the blood packet yeah. not actually cut anything. no i feel like i've seen this actually yeah and, <laughs> and then i've also heard where they they put them under and, and take an organ no fair enough yeah, yeah. so 
I'm also might be thinking of the man on the moon with Andy Kaufman and Jim Carrey. Cause that's what he goes down to like Latin America for when he's sick. Oh, and okay. they do like a fake surgery on him. So well, maybe it mine was, was Dayline. Dayline. Yeah. Mine was a Jim Carrey movie. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe the movie got it from that. Maybe. Yeah. Or it's Dayline, not but... funny what happened no, to those people. That's not ideal. <laughs> <laughs> but that's crazy. Um, <laughs> but you think they have, the high standards I think some places definitely do uh, but I just I always I wouldn't do it myself I know it saves you some money how is it so much cheaper it's just different economies right like if it's a doctor from here though wouldn't they want to be making the same amount of money I think they probably their cut of it is probably pretty good I think just Mm -hmm. you're paying staff way less you're paying for equipment way less I mean you're right that standards maybe not even in the the surgical suite itself but standards of maintenance for from their colleges watching them are way less so they can actually cut corners and save money just it's probably less expensive to just run the place um yeah i guess yeah it's just it's weird that it it can be that much much like i remember the hair transplants the turkey ones are so much cheaper yeah much yeah I have so lots of patients. Doesn't make we'll see. sense. Are they using like uh, horse hair instead or something? I think they're using real hair. Um, but yeah, you can't be sure. <laughs> I can't be sure. You know, they usually <laughs> take your own. But do you think you have any risk of losing your job to like a machine or AI kind of thing? I think I'm good for a little while, but I think a lot of doctors do. Yeah, but a lot of everyone does. Online, <clears throat> maybe they can send pictures of some things and so eventually yeah for pattern recognition for that yeah i think because i still work with my hands a lot Mm -hmm. i'm still a little bit safer there's a robot the da vinci (coughs) da vinci robot i've worked with the da vinci yeah you have you still need a person to run it oh Um, i made a bunch of money off that stock (laughs) really a couple years ago like 10 times i just i was like this is a cool robot it's very cool um and it was funny because i remember i was training that was back when i was in montreal they were using it for prostate surgeries and, and gynecology surgeries and all the old like fantastic surgeons were terrible with it and all the residents picked it up right away because it was like a video game yeah and so the the old guys who knew how to do everything were so slow and then the the new resident was like done in five seconds but so still need a person to run that one maybe there will be ai able to run it eventually too. yeah maybe and like i think other doctors are gonna like radiology ai is already reading x-rays you know practically perfect so so do they just need like sort of an admin person instead of a doctor at that point? I mean, point? probably there's probably going to be like a higher level, right? Like supervising. let would still be one person, but whereas 10 were reading it before, now it's just one supervising. Like it's probably yeah. going to cut down those things. I mean, radiologists do interventional things too to keep their hands busy, but like there's a lot of things that, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cut into for sure. If doctors aren't safe, no one's safe. Well, uh, my brother's <laughs> a lawyer. He's terrified, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, they always use lawyers yeah. as the example. So much of what he writes could just be done in like two seconds. So Yeah, I'm writing my vows with chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Good, good, yeah. I'm glad. <laughs> maybe we'll cut that. Maybe we'll leave it. Uh, you know, she's not watching. She, this comes she, out after the wedding, yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, I okay. tried it actually a couple times. Really, and uh, it was beautiful. I have never tried it yet. I I haven't actually like sat down and tried any of the AI stuff, but I do it all the time. It makes me a little nervous. I, I yeah. do it just for fun. I'll I'll be like, write me a Seinfeld episode, but um, I'll kind of give them the story, like a little and skeleton. And it's they... awesome. It's like it never ended. The show it. never ended. <laughs> yeah, but that's uh, it could it could take your yeah. job. I I think. I think everyone has to be somewhat, but they're like, not they're, soon, but they'll be, I, I think I got enough till I retire probably. And then by then we'll see. But a lot of the like, uh, really basic stuff could probably be off yeah. your plate, I yeah. guess. And you're right that even, I do believe that if photos of certain conditions can start to get programmed well enough, it can probably read that pretty good. Um, so even if they're using it for people who just can't get in to see a doctor, people in like small towns and things like that, like there yeah. probably is a way for that to be sooner rather than later getting they're used. trying i know a couple of companies like even telus they do um they're doing a whole online clinic yeah, yeah there's telemedicine stuff like that for sure yeah. already but there's still a doctor reading it at the end but mm-hmm. yeah one doctor yeah instead of <laughs> yeah all of the doctors yeah. i guess maybe there'll only be one doctor eventually yeah. well it's like highlander yeah you should try to make it you <laughs> yeah I'm gonna... that would be good S- start yeah. then people would really want to date you yeah <laughs> if you were the one doctor okay yeah, yeah. that's true <laughs> that'd help yeah not that they don't now I'm doing okay. Yeah. It does say doctor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got a date tomorrow. I'll be fine. <laughs> um, what time are we at? Hour and eight minutes. I went long. Yeah. I was I've never gone here. long. It usually gets 15 minutes dead on. Wow. Yeah. Okay. 
we're pretty much done. So then. we're good then. Yeah. Well, even with the coughing and the choking incidents, like that still gives you enough. We can like, make it. You can pick an animal, and we can <laughs> replace the cough with that animal noise. But as long as it's pleasing to the ears. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like so a, like it's a, not going to be a lion roaring. No, like one of those cooing doves. A like, cooing you know? dove. <laughs> a chickadee. <laughs> okay, we're back to the chickadee again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah full, I like it. full circle. Yeah. Let's just end the podcast. <laughs> That's a perfect. But yeah. Put in a little bow. On chickadees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's, I just take my headphones off. I'm done. That's how it ends? Yeah, okay, bye. all right. Me too. <laughs> I can't believe I went long. <laughs>